Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quadratic equation. We have 4z squared plus 4z bar which is the complex conjugate of z equals negative 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. Now it would be nice to have something like 4z squared plus 4z equals negative 1 because if you add 1 to both sides, you're going to get something awesome, what is called a perfect square. And that's perfect. So you would have 2z plus 1, blah, 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 and you could solve easily. But that's not the case. Or is it? We'll get, we're going to find out. Let's go ahead and take a look at this expression. Obviously, z and z bar are not necessarily the same thing, but can they ever be equal, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can solve these kinds of problems. In general, whenever you're given an equation that includes z, z bar, absolute value of z, sometimes argument of z, you can replace z with a plus pi. And that is the name of this channel, right? There's a reason why I named this channel that way. So z equals a plus bi is going to be our key. Okay, that's what we're going to use. Let's go ahead and replace z with that everywhere, but this is z bar, and from here, z bar, which is the complex conjugate of z, is going to be a minus bi. Remember, to find the conjugate of a complex number, or just to conjugate, I guess, to comp a complex number, you change the imaginary part. You can negate the imaginary part, the real part stays the same. So that should kind of give you an idea about what I just said previously, hopefully. Now let's see how this plays out. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And that equals negative 1. Eventually, you may want to put everything on the same side. doesn't matter with complex numbers because no matter what, you're going to be able to set those equal to each other. That's what's really nice about complex numbers because they have two components, a real part and an imaginary part, just like a vector, right? So how do you square a plus b? I Hopefully, you know by now if you've seen the previous videos, it's a squared minus b squared plus 2abi and negative b squared comes from the square of bi which is b squared i squared and then this is going to be 4a minus 4bi and I'm just going to add 1 to both sides to set it equal to 0. Let's go ahead and distribute and then we're going to separate the real parts and the imaginary parts, okay? So we're going to combine like terms and in this case like terms are real parts and imaginary parts. So we have a 4a squared, that's real, 4b squared, and then plus 4a, and then plus 1, right? And this is going to be set as the real part, and then the imaginary part is going to come from 8ab, right? 8ab minus 4b, and all of that is multiplied by. By the way, I said that uh, you can add 1 to both sides, or you can leave the negative 1 alone. Either way is fine. It doesn't matter. No big deal. So now, here's what happens. Since this complex number equals 0, 0 is a very, very special number because it can only be written as 0 plus 0i. In other words, both the real part and the imaginary part have to be 0. So this is equal to 0. This is equal to 0. Let's start with the second equation, I mean this one, because that's easier to solve. Notice that the first equation is quadratic in A and B, so if you're trying to solve that equation, you would go into so much trouble, okay? That would be painful. Now, let's go ahead and set the second equation to 0, and then factor out 4B. Oh man, I, I, I wish I had a 2B so I could say that thing, but anyways another time maybe. Now we have a factor, uh, two factors actually, and then product is equal to zero from zero product property. That's such a weird name for a property, but that's what they call it usually. B equals zero or A is equal to one half, right? So there are two possibilities. We have to look at both and let's go ahead and check each case. Now what happens, uh, let's call this first case and let's call this the second case. First case, B is equal to zero. Now, you got to remember, we have another equation, right? 4a squared minus 4b squared plus 4a plus 1 
equals zero. That's the real part of our complex number, right? And we know that b is equal to zero, so that's gonna simplify things a great deal. We can now replace b with zero, and that's gonna give us 4a squared minus 4a plus one equals zero. Wait a minute, isn't this the stuff that we just talked about at the beginning? Yes, let's see how this unfolds. I'm gonna write it as 2a minus one quantity squared equals zero, and from here we're gonna get a equals one half. So what is that supposed to mean? a is one half, b is zero. Let's put it together. Remember z is a plus bi, therefore our first solution z sub one can be written as one half plus zero i, or just one half which means z sub 1 is a real number, which means its conjugate equals itself, which means when we assume that z bar is the same thing as z, everything would work out perfectly. Of course, you could make that assumption, what if z is real, what happens? But that doesn't give you all the solutions, that's why we have case number 2. All right, ready for case number 2? We're going to go ahead and look at a equals 1 half as the second case, and then see what that gives us. Again, let's remember our second equation. I always forget, so I have to look it up. 4a squared minus 4b squared plus 4a plus 1 equals 0. Okay, great. So this is even better because we have a lot of a's, well, at least two. Uh, when you plug in 1 half, this is going to give you 4 times 1 fourth, which is 1, minus 4b squared plus 4 times 1 half is 2, plus 1 equals 0. Now, 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. That's awesome. So 4 equals 4b squared, because I can add 4b squared, right? And now I got b squared almost by itself. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 4. And that gives us b squared equals 1. And as you know, that gives us two values because, oh, you got to remember something. b is real, right? When you write a complex number uh, as a plus bi, you got to remember that a and b are real numbers and i is imaginary. Okay, you got to be careful about that. So from here we get two values, b is 1 or negative 1. This is especially important when you get an equation like b cubed equals 1, because with b squared equals 1, you still get the same square roots, sort of, plus and minus. But with the cube root, there are actually three cube roots of a complex number, but if b is real, there is only one cube root. Okay? The others are not going to work. Great. So let's go ahead and see how we can proceed with this. So I got two b values, two b or not two b, yay, I was able to say that. Now, what was the a value? a equals one half, so a equals one half and b equals one, gives us z sub two as one half plus one i, and a equals one half with b equals negative one gives us z sub three equals one half minus i, or plus negative 1i, okay? So those are the z sub 2 and z sub 3 values, and remember, z sub 1 was, what was it? 1 half, just 1 half, okay? Without a, an imaginary part. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Uh, until then, uh, be safe, take care, and... Wait a minute, I just realized I made a mistake. We're not done yet. That should be a plus sign. Yes, because when b is 0, this is going to disappear. This is going to be a plus sign. This is going to be a minus 1 half. So z sub 1 is going to be negative 1 half, and z sub 1 is going to be negative 1 half. And this really brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.